Hi and welcome to Back to Tennis with Brodies. I have created three great programs for anyone coming back to tennis or anyone who is new to tennis. All of the exercises can be delivered at home in your own space and in your own time or they can be delivered in a club or in a school playground or school gym. Everything takes into account all the safe distance guidelines that we have to follow and every activity will develop a physical skill that you need to be able to play tennis. Programme 3 is for families. There are 10 game stations which can easily be recreated at home using household objects or they can be set up as a club or after school session where each game is played for 3 minutes and then move on to the next station. Easy to control with a stopwatch and a hooter. A great 30 to 40 minute activity. My coaching philosophy is all about creating games that do the teaching for me so that kids have fun and they learn without realising. And I know from my own kids that they don't really want to be taught by you, but they do want to play with you. So what will tennis ask of your kids? To be able to play tennis, you're going to have to be able to track, send and receive a ball, move to and from a bouncing ball, control your body to control the racket to control the ball, Hit at different heights on both sides of your body and above your head. <coughs> Judge distance, height, speed and direction of the ball. And you're going to have to be able to cooperate with a partner. So each of these 10 game stations will help to develop some of these skills. And we always start with the simplest stage and we always start with the hands. We try to build confidence and enjoyment through success and then we start to add lots of different progressions. When tennis was first invented, it was played just with the hand and a ball. The racket came later, so it's always made sense to me to train the hands first and then to add the racket. And as tennis is a two-sided sport, make sure you try all of these games with left and right hands. Have fun! This station is called Race and Chase, and it is great for speed off the mark and chasing a moving ball, which of course is what tennis asks you to do. So one player has the ball, you roll it through the pink lines and you're trying to score a goal through the cones at the top. So this is all about your aiming skills here. The other player chases after the ball and stops it. Right hand, left hand, right foot, left foot with a cone or with a tennis racket and sends it back through the pink lines to the partner. This station is called Jackpot. And this is all about developing your aiming skills and learning how to judge speed, distance, height and direction. You need an assortment of things to throw, soft toys, balls, bean bags, whatever you've got lying around the house. And you're trying to get as many of them into a target as you can. This station is called Mix and Match. You need a soft toy or a bean bag and some kind of play ball or a tennis ball. We start off with a soft toy and we throw up in a rainbow shape so that our partner can catch it with two hands. We can throw with right hand, left hand or both hands. When we can do that we put the soft toy down and we use the tennis ball and we send down in a V shape to go underneath our little mini net. And when we can do that we're going to mix and match. So one player has the soft toy, one player has the ball. You look at each other and say one, two, three, go. You throw at the same time and you try and mix and match. If you can do that, you're going to rise to the challenge by bringing in the tennis racket. And that makes it a whole lot more difficult. I call this exercise splat. So I create a little court. I'm kneeling on my line and I'm rolling the ball through the two pink lines in front of me to my partner. My partner will stop the ball by splatting it with her hand, turning and sending it back. Once we can do that, we add a second ball. So we're swapping tennis balls along the ground. Once we can do that, we're going to stand up because we're going to add some movement. And I'm going to move to the outside of my pink line and I'm going to send the ball down here. My partner does the same and I step across and I stop the ball with my left hand because tennis is a two-sided sport, both sides have to work and I have to be able to move to and from the ball. If we get good at that, I might move the lines just a little bit further apart so that I'm having to move a little bit further to and from the ball. 
And once we've mastered that, we start all over again and we use the racket. So we can stand to the side because it's easier to make the ball go straight if we stand to the side. I can make forehand, I could stand to the other side and make backhand, or I could make tweener. This station is called roll and control. So it's aiming skills again, judging distance, speed and direction. We use a hoop as our target area and I roll out of my hand to try to make the ball stay inside the hoop. If it stays inside the hoop, I rotate the hoop over and I increase the distance. When I'm rolling, I can roll right hand, left hand, both hands or tweener. And once I can do it with my hands, I'm going to try to do it with the racket. So I stand to the side, I bump forehand, I bump backhand, or I bump tweener. Yes. This station is called Jump the River. So this is great for jumping and hopping, which of course develop leg strength and speed off the mark. So we've got our little river here that's made with two pieces of blue rope. It's got some little soft toys in it. And we find different ways to get across the river from a standing start. Then we will add in a run and jump. And at that point, we add in the little circle. So it could be a chalk circle or it could be a rubber circle like this so that when kids land, they're trying to stay in the circle because that develops the leg strength and the balance that we're looking for. We would encourage them then to take something from the pile and send the ball or the soft toy to the parent. The parent could send it back to you, you send it back again and you start over. Once you've mastered that with a ball or a soft toy, you're going to pick up a little racket. You are going to try to balance something on the racket when you run. So you run, jump, and you send it to the parent. This exercise is called rack attack. All you need is your racket. It's great for quick reactions and getting used to having a racket in your hand if you're not used to doing that. Put the racket on the ground like that. One of you will shout out a body part. You have to touch that body part and then rescue the racket before it falls over. So, tummy, shoulder, knee, toes. Remember to do it with your right hand and with your left hand. Once you've had a go at that, you're going to work with your partner. You have the racket beside you. Your partner starts very close to you because we're building up confidence through the success. You say one, two, three, go. You let go of your racket. You grab your partner's racket, they grab your rackets, and if you're successful, you take one step back, you increase the distance, and you increase the challenge. Welcome to our obstacle course, which is great for developing coordination skills. Find lots of things that are lying around the house and garden. Things for kids to go over, under, through, and around. Create a little circuit with a start point, and an end point that has a target, because most games finish with a target, a goal or a hoop, and off you go. This station is called Double Trouble, which means that we are moving towards doing two things at the same time but it's all about throwing and catching a bouncing ball and moving to and from a bouncing ball, which are two very important things if you're going to be able to play tennis. So we're throwing the ball down in a V shape to our partner, bouncing in the hoop and onto our partner. When we can do that, we're going to add a second ball. So we go one, two, three, go. We throw at the same time and we catch at the same time. When we've perfected that, we add a little bit of movement. So I move across to the other hoop and I send to the hoop that's in front of me. My partner does exactly the same thing and I take one step across and I'm catching a bouncing ball. If we get good at that, we increase the challenge by increasing the distance between the hoops, which means that I throw and I take a couple of steps before I catch. 
and so on. Once we've mastered that with our hand, we're going to add the racket. And we start again with one ball and one hoop, sending it down in a V-shape for our partner to catch in a sandwich trap. That's the ball in between your hand and the racket, like a sandwich. And then work up to two balls in the same hoop, in one ball in each of the two hoops with a bit of movement, then increase the distance. And before you know it, you will be able to play tennis. I call this station Let's Rally because we're building up to being able to hit the ball to and from each other with the racket. But we start with the hand and we learn to throw first by controlling the hand to send the ball in a rainbow shape to bounce inside the hoop for our partner to catch. The partner sends it back, it bounces in front of my line and I can catch it. It's a very important exercise for tennis because we will never be able to have a rally together if we can't both control the ball to make it bounce in front of our partner. So that's step one. When we can do that, we rotate the hoop and we increase the distance. And we carry on until we have learned to judge distance, speed and direction. Then we would bring the hoop back to where we started and we'd add one racket. One player throws and the other traps the ball between their hand and the racket in a sandwich catch. This is a halfway point between catching with your hands and hitting the ball back to your partner. Always trap the ball in front of your body and then find different ways to send it back, starting with the simplest. Straight back from the left side and the right side, above your head, backwards over your head, or you could turn away. Your partner calls your name and you turn and catch. Great for quick reactions. All of these progressions can be done with a bounce or without a bounce. So once you can do that, you're going to try and build up a little rally with your partner. So your partner can bump the ball into the hoop. That would be a rally of one. Then I would bump it into the hoop. You bump it back to me. I trap it, a rally of two. and build up progressively and slowly. Because if you can control the ball in small spaces like this, it's much easier then to grow into a bigger court.